Hey guys, this is Jack and welcome to this video in my How to Fly FPV Quads series. Now in this video I'll be going over the basics of turning your quad so that you can start flying around along with some common errors and how you can fix them. We'll then go into the liftoff FPV simulator and see how we can practice your turns on there before we go out and try it in real life. Now in my previous video I went over the basics of flying your quad forward and bringing it to a stop. In this video we'll build onto those skills and have you flying around. So let's get right into it. Firstly, there's one very important point to understand. Depending on how fast you are flying forward, you would need to find a different balance in every corner between inputs on every axis. Roll your pitch and throttle. You will never apply the same amount of input for every corner unless you are flying the exact same speed and approaching the corner exactly as you just did, which is nearly impossible. No two corners will be the same, so let me try and simplify it for you a bit. The slower you are flying, the more yaw you will need to fly around the corner. The faster you are flying, the more roll, throttle and pitch you would need to bank around the corner. Let's look at the following example. If your quad is pitched at 0 degrees, it's not moving anywhere. If your quad is pitched at 90 degrees, it's flying forward as fast as it possibly can. This isn't possible though as we won't have any lift anymore since the props are facing dead forward and it's not an aeroplane that has wings to create lift. Theoretically, the most you can pitch your quad before it doesn't have lift anymore is 89 degrees. Now in the middle of all of this is a 45 degree pitch. Okay, so let's look at the following example. At 0 degree pitch, your quad won't change direction it's pointing in if you apply roll input. It will only change direction if you apply yaw. Then at 90 degree pitch, your quad will only change direction if you apply roll input. If you apply yaw, your quad won't change any direction. So then with that said, we can come to the conclusion that at a 45 degree pitch, your roll and your inputs will theoretically be the same. On paper, that's how it should be, but it won't always be like that. Some factors that would influence this is whether or not you're flying an X-frame and if your roll and pitch rates are set the same. With that said though, it should still be pretty close. So you want to try and find a balance between roll and your inputs so that you're banking around the corners. Something else was mentioning as well is that the faster you are going, the more you need to balance pitch and throttle control but I'll touch more on that in an upcoming video where I talk about racing. For now, just focus on getting your roll and your balance right and the pitch and throttle control should come naturally. So now we know the theory behind cornering, let's see how we can practice this in real life. First, you want to build a square track as I did over here. You can place a noodle 30 feet apart to make a perfect square. Some ground markers are also a big help to see where these noodles are. So for the first exercise, you want to fly really slowly around the course and only use yaw to turn around the corners. For this to work, you need to go very slowly. Remember, the faster you go, the more roll you need to apply to make it through the corner. You only want to practice your for now, so the slower, the better. Also, don't worry about your height at first. You might want to fly a little higher than usual since you will most likely lose some altitude around the corners. As soon as you can fly one battery going clockwise and one battery going anti-clockwise, let's step it up a little. Next, start flying a little bit faster. Remember, the faster you go, the more roll you need to apply. Keep going at it until you're comfortable with your pace. Make sure you practice this in both directions so you don't develop a dominant side for turning. You want to be equally as comfortable going around both ways. Alright, moving on to the next exercise, let's start with alternating some turns. What you want to do next is place 4 noodles in a row about 30 feet apart from each other. Then you want to use the end noodles as a hairpin and weave through the center ones, just like I did in this demonstration. This is a good way of practicing to alternate your turns and balancing your inputs. Keep doing this until you're fairly confident in your turns, especially the hairpins. This might be tricky at first, but keep going at it until you can fly an entire battery without crashing your quad. Finally, this next exercise is what we're working towards. Take away two noodles so that you can practice figure of eights. This is an extremely good exercise for your turning technique. It teaches you to balance all four inputs at the same time. The difficult part of this exercise is to try and keep your quad at the same height at all times and not overshooting the noodles. Rather fly slower and more accurate than fast and sloppy. Keep practicing this exercise until you can do it flawlessly. For a beginner, it's not as easy as it seems, but don't get discouraged by this. Just keep practicing and you will get better. Finally, let's move on to advanced braking. You should only practice this braking technique once you are very comfortable flying figure of eights. I'll say it again, don't even attempt this if you can't fly figure of eights. I'm saying this because it's very, very easy to crash your quad if you don't do this right. You need to be able to balance all four inputs without a lot of trouble. Doing this is a lot easier with air mode active, so I would definitely recommend you fly with air mode on. 
So to do this, you basically want to cut your throttle, roll your quad, and then give a big thrust in the opposite direction. In this example, I keep my throttle open and then do it again to show you what you need to do. If you just want to brake, don't keep your throttle open. Only apply enough throttle to stop your quad's momentum and then ease off of it. These exercises should get you on your way to flying around. As a side note, you may want to start flying all over the field before you finish these exercises. I know you must be extremely excited to just get going, but I would definitely recommend you try and keep yourself from doing that until you've mastered these exercises. It will definitely lessen the likelihood of crashing your quad if you're able to fly these exercises flawlessly before you start exploring the area with your new skills. Now as always, let's practice these exercises on the liftoff FPB simulator before you go out in real life to practice this. Liftoff is an invaluable tool to learn without breaking the bank, so definitely try all these exercises on here first before you go out in real life. I've created a track with the exact same exercises and this track will be accessible through the in-game tutorial section. Exactly as before, start off with only yawing around the square in both directions, then start to bank around the corners once you're comfortable, increasing your pace with every lap. Then we'll move on to the alternating turns. This might be tricky at first, but keep going at it, you will eventually get it right. Finally, practice your figure of eights. Once you're able to do all these exercises flawlessly on the game, go ahead and give it a shot in real life. Trust me, practice as often as you can on the simulator and you should be able to get through these exercises in real life with flying colors. Now in my next video, I'll talk a little more about throttle control and give you some theory behind this very important skill. Throttle control will be very important moving forward, especially when we start talking about racing and freestyle. So if you've learned something in this video and you want to stay updated on the upcoming how-to videos, make sure you hit the subscribe button. I'll be uploading tons of videos to help you become a better FPV pilot. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll catch you guys in my next video. This is Jack, signing off.